Sure, our next one is question number nine, nine on module eight homework. The weight in pounds of six vehicles and the variability of their braking distances and feet when stopping on the dry surface area of no surface are shown in the table. Okay. Can you conclude that there is a significant linear correlation between vehicle weight and variability in braking distance on the dry surface? Use alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, so we have this. But I think we start with um, setting up the hypothesis. So the null is always assuming that there is no uh, correlation. So say that rho population correlation coefficient equals zero for the null hypothesis. And for the alternative, I have to go with the two-tailed, two-sided test that rho does not equal to zero. So we want to reject this null and go and believe that there is a significant um, correlation that's not equal to zero. So let's go ahead and uh, find the critical values first. With alpha level 0 0.05 and using student t distribution, let me go open up um, student t calculator. Okay, t calculator. So go to stat calculators and t. Okay, and I'm going to do between because I want um, area to the right of this critical value and area to the left of this negative critical value. What's the degrees of freedom? Look, six vehicles, so six take away two, the degrees of freedom is four, okay? Get rid of these numbers. And what I want is, how much do I want in the middle? If alpha is 0 0.05, that's in the tails, right? That's in the tail zone. So if I do one minus 0 0.05, I get 95% in the middle, okay? 5% outside, 95% in the middle. The critical values are um, positive 2.776 and negative of that number, okay? So if we get test statistic that is, um, that is either greater than this positive number or less than this negative number, we will say we reject the null hypothesis, okay? And that there is, a significant uh, correlation. Okay, um, how do we do this? Let's think. Let me let me try to remember. Can we just do this on stack crunch, or do we have to use that formula? I'll try something. Okay, um, go ahead and do linear regression for me using the oh, not this one to open up a new stack crunch. Go ahead and do a new linear regression. Okay, um, do stat. Regression, simple linear with the weight and the variability. And um, just keep everything the same here. Okay, keep everything the same. Assume that slope is equal to zero. Alternative is assuming that slope does not equal to zero. I'm going to try to use this part, okay? Um, and then compute it. And the test statistic for rho is the t stat for slope. Okay, so that's that. So this is how I will do it um, on your homework and quiz. Uh, but if you want to use the formula, let me see. Um, okay, I wasn't in the gray box, so that's okay. So if you go to the textbook, you should be able to look up that formula for test statistic. Um, in case you want to do that without stack crunch. You will have to find R to use that formula, but you can easily find R using stack crunch. Um, now that's, you know, if you want to do it by hand, this test statistic, that probably took me like a long time. But just wanted to show you that you saw a formula in 9 point, I can't remember which section, I believe it was 9.1. Yeah, 9.1. Let me go a couple pages to the right. When you read it, when you read this textbook, I bet you saw an example. So you have to find the R first if you want to use this test statistic formula for Rho. Um, and here we go. Oh, that's for R, sorry. Let's go find the test statistic. And that's on page. Oh, here it is. Hey, there you go. Um, that was on page number 478. So what I just did using StatCrunch, um, I took the t-stat 
of slope. But if you, you can also get the same number by using this, okay? You do r divided by square root of 1 minus r squared divided by n minus 2. So test it out. You should get the same answer. But I always just now go with technology, you know, make it easy. But all right, let's go ahead and make a conclusion now. Um, this number, 1.58, well, this number is not bigger than 2.776 or it is not smaller than negative 2.776. It's actually in between these two. So um, it's not significant enough. We're going to have to tell them there is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to conclude there is significant linear correlation, correlation between these two variables. So if this t test statistic came out to be bigger than 2.776, like 2.8, or smaller than negative 2.776, like negative 2.9, then I would have said there is enough evidence to say there is significant linear correlation. But because this was actually in between these two bounds, um, it's not in the rejection region. Therefore, that's what we have to conclude. So oh, I like this problem. Um, you can just read the t stat of the slope column when you do the linear regression for the test statistic t to test row, okay?